These popular fish in Eastern Europe and Asia have jumped into the spotlight here in the U.S. and are leaping all over the Mississippi River Basin. Their dense populations and voracious appetite have our native fish starving for attention to this catastrophic issue. The Asian carp is just one more enemy in this daily battle with the silent invaders. It's a warm August morning on the Mississippi River near Brighton, Illinois, not far from the mouth of the Illinois River. Eric Ratcliffe is a fisheries biologist with the Illinois Natural History Survey. He and his fellow biologists are out on the water to sample the fish populations by temporarily stunning them with this specially equipped boat. We do 15 minute electro fishing runs at approximately 4,000 watts and we cover about 200 yards and we're trying to get the uh, handle on the fish community, so we're interested in every species of fish that comes to the surface. Attached to the bow are electrodes that deliver current into the water to stun the fish, which are then caught alive using a dip net. Here's a green sunfish. The Great Rivers Field Station has been surveying this part of the Mississippi for the past 20 years. And for the first 10 years, there were plenty of native fish that would come to the surface when stunned. But within the last decade or so, when Eric activates the electrodes on his boat, this happens. Here comes the power. Instead of native fish floating to the surface, Asian carp, an invasive species that now dominates this river, fly out of the water like popcorn. The rivers and tributaries that make up the Mississippi River Basin are infested with them. These fish have become very well established and are abundant, you know, especially the further south you go on the Mississippi, um, the more abundant they seem to become. And then the Illinois River all the way up to Peoria is uh, just absolutely loaded with these fish. Wow! Welcome to the Illinois River, one part of the Mississippi River Basin where it's not uncommon to spook a school of Asian carp with your boat and soon be overcome by them. Oh, watch out. And worse yet, people get hurt. This is about an average size silver carp. Uh, this is one that can hurt you when it jumps. If your boat's going 20, 30 miles an hour and this guy hits you, it's gonna leave a mark. Kevin Irons is a large river ecologist with the Illinois Natural History Survey out of Havana, Illinois. He's been researching the fish population in the Illinois River for over 10 years. And even though there are actually eight members of the Asian carp family, it's two of them, the big head and the silver carp, that have grown to enormous populations and bring real trouble to the rivers. Big head carp on my left and a silver carp on my right. Probably the easiest way to tell the difference is to actually look for this um, crease up on the silver carp. If you have a crease that goes up all the way below the chin, it's a silver carp. The big head carp are nice and smooth without a, a ridge. So this is a big head carp. The name carp is actually misleading. Unlike the common carp, Asian carp are not bottom feeders. They voraciously eat the same nutritious plankton that the native fish need to survive. Plus, they grow quickly and to huge sizes, 20, 40, even 80 pounds. The females can lay 2 million eggs a year and they multiply like rabbits. According to Kevin Irons, the Havana Field Station saw its first big head carp in 1991, and it was the dominant breed in the river until about 2003. Since then, the silver carp, which is the jumping fish, has forced the big head aside and taken over its territory. And because Asian carp grow so rapidly, they can be considered prey for only a very short period of time. Once they get to a certain size, we don't have a predator that's capable of eating them, and they're just running unchecked. The fear now is that Asian carp are headed to the Great Lakes, and the quest is on to stop them. Along this canal is a multi-million dollar mechanism designed to do just that. To look at the river, you wouldn't even notice that there's something here until you read the signs. This is the Chicago Sanitary and Ship Canal. The water here is charged with a pulsating direct current that is meant to keep fish at bay. 
electrical pulses come out of the building and go to steel bars that lie on the bottom of the canal. This is an example. They're five inch by five inch solid steel billets. There are actually 42 of these solid steel billets on the bottom of the canal. Any boat, cargo, barge, or fish that wants to get from the Mississippi River Basin to Lake Michigan must pass through here. Right now, the electrically charged dispersal barrier may be the only hope of keeping Asian carp out of the Great Lakes, but it comes at a huge cost. The total project cost is approximately $20 million. By the time we're done with the next barrier, we'll probably be double that in the range of $40 million. Plus, the electric bill to operate the barriers can range from forty dollars to $60,000 a month. The electric barrier's effectiveness is the center of huge controversy. In November of 2009, Asian carp DNA was discovered beyond the electrical barriers. And in June of 2010, a 19-pound Asian carp was found in Lake Calumet, about six miles downstream from Lake Michigan. Some see it as strong evidence that Asian carp may have breached the barrier. And the state of Michigan wants the canal closed. But Illinois claims closing the canal would upset the movement of millions of tons of vital cargo, totaling one and a half billion dollars a year and the loss of thousands of jobs. To counter that, Michigan says if Asian carp should ever populate the Great Lakes, it would cost three billion dollars and thousands of jobs. Of all the invasive species threatening the Great Lakes, this one could be the very worst. Keeping them under control is a high priority. The numbers are just devastating. Um, four to 7,000 fish per river mile. It's definitely dominating at least the Illinois River and parts of the Mississippi, the Ohio, uh, the Missouri. Um, this may be one of the worst invaders we've seen in the U.S. for a long time when we look at fish populations. Coming up, if you wonder just how dangerous the silver carp is, watch this. <laughs> Silent Invaders is a production of the North American Media Group in cooperation with the Environmental Protection Agency and the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative and by the USDA Forest Service, Wildlife Forever, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the Great Lakes Fishery Commission, and these other organizations. Asian carp were introduced to the United States in the 1970s to control algae and catfish farms in the South. Floods washed them into the Mississippi River in the 1980s. They've been working their way upriver ever since. Kevin Irons is a large river ecologist with the Illinois Natural History Survey in Havana, Illinois. He has spent over a decade monitoring the fish populations on an 80-mile stretch of the Illinois River. This is probably the world's uh, densest population of silver carp anyway, perhaps Big Head also. Uh, it's kind of ground zero on this invasion. Uh, there's a ton of fish and uh, they're reproducing very well in most years. On this day, he's exploring the Spoon River, a tributary of the Illinois River. Using a process called electrofishing, he's about to see what species of fish reside in these waters, embracing himself for what he's expecting to happen. This could be interesting. I'll turn it on here to see if anything goes. Yeah, oh, right around back, back. Behind the boat, wow. Watch out, they're everywhere. Watching silver carp overwhelm a boat is an awesome, almost unbelievable sight and a clear indication of the serious population impact these fish are having on the Mississippi River Basin. It doesn't take an electric shock to make these fish jump like this. When silver carp are startled by any recreational boat, they are not only a nuisance, but dangerous. They also bring havoc to the native fish by gobbling up their food supply and squeezing them out of the rivers. And young Asian carp don't stay tiny for very long, so they have no natural predators to eat them. That's why many are asking, how do we get rid of them? That was the question experts were debating recently on the Lewis and Clark Community College campus in Grafton, Illinois. This is the Asian Carp Marketing Summit. It is thought to be the first time so many people of varied interests have sat together in the same room to talk about the Asian carp issue. Commercial harvesters, processors, restaurant folks, chefs, distributors, natural resource managers, researchers, and non-governmental organizations. 
One important conclusion from this gathering of experts is that the best way to beat Asian carp just might be to eat Asian carp. And that's just what they did in the form of fish cakes. Mm. Very good. I would think it was seafood if I didn't know it was Asian carp. Very good. The stereotype of eating, taking a bite of carp in my mind is just instant gag reflex and this is not that way at all. The vision about all this is to literally educate, it, uh, educate our people how to eat this fish. That's all. This is what it's all about. All right, you got a good picture of that? It was New Orleans chef Philippe Parola who created the Asian carp fish cakes and is now hoping a group of investors will help him build a processing plant in Grafton, Illinois. His plan is to market Asian carp products to restaurants and grocery stores nationwide to actually create a demand for invasive species. We're gonna make this from the trash fish to a gourmet fish. Unlike common carp, Asian carp eat plankton, which Chef Philippe says makes their meat white, flaky, and tasty. In fact, what he calls his silver fin fish cakes are already on the menu at the Oceana Grill on Bourbon Street in New Orleans. We call it silver fin, you know, Asian carp, it's, it's not an attractive name. If we can come up with a cute name for that fish, I truly think it, it sells. But even though Asian carp might be pleasing to the palate, they are extremely bony and Americans hate bones. Other countries and other uh, cultures have evolved around eating this fish and they don't seem to mind doing it, but Americans are a pretty picky bunch and uh, they have not accepted this wholeheartedly as a food product yet. With that in mind, Chef Philippe Parola devoted a year to cooking the fish and developing a commercial steaming process for removing the fish's bones. Meaning that I can do this literally at 20,000 pounds of fish per hour. That's what I'm talking about. And that's not easy to achieve, but it's done with American technology. Getting the invasive species out of the rivers and onto dinner plates is one way of creating a market for the fish and encouraging commercial fishermen to harvest them. A more profitable incentive, many believe, than making fertilizer or pet food. There's a lot of different products that can be made with this fish. Uh, the economics of it are such that if that product that you're making doesn't end up on someone's plate, you're not going to be able to offer enough money to a fisherman to, to get him interested to, to go out and fish for it. But there is also a fear that creating a love for this fish could backfire. The object, after all, is to eradicate the Asian carp, not to create a demand for more. And so when we're structuring this action plan or these markets, we need to make sure that there is an exit strategy so that when the Asian carp get down to um, either are eradicated or get down to the numbers where they're no longer a viable market, that we then, you know, get out. The Asian carp population in the Mississippi River Basin is exploding, literally. We're very concerned about the Illinois River uh, because it's directly connected to the Great Lakes. There is no natural predator for this invasive species, except humans. So I think that this harvesting of Asian carp is one way that we can bring down those numbers and reduce the problem. Commercial fishermen are being encouraged to harvest Asian carp, but Americans don't seem to have an appetite for the fish, mostly because of its name and reputation. Why do we want to call this trash fish? Why don't we put this on the market? New Orleans chef Philippe Parola wants to bring value to Asian carp and get the fish into restaurants and grocery stores. Because fact of the matter is, this fish is excellent. And the way our pollock and cod numbers are being depleted in the world, uh, you know, this is a very viable food source to replace that. Hello. Mike Schaefer is co-owner and president of Schaefer Fisheries in Thompson, Illinois. I testified at the Senate Hearing Committee in Chicago, and much to their amaze, they didn't even realize there was any use for this fish. Common consensus on that was that it was strictly a garbage fish, had no marketing value or anything. Americans might view the Asian carp as garbage, but Schaefer Fisheries sells this invasive species as protein-rich food to markets all over the world. 
In places like Asia, the Middle East, and Europe, an appetite for the fish already exists. After we run it through our deboning machine, it comes out like a hamburger. It can be uh, substituted for, for uh, beef or any kind of ground meat protein. Schaefer Fisheries was started by Mike Schaefer's father back in 1955 as a mom and pop business supplying fish to restaurants and supper clubs. A retail store still exists in Fulton, Illinois, where one of their most popular items is smoked common carp. I didn't realize there was such a high market for carp until I started working here. Mainly what we do in this plant is, is just the underutilized species, the carp, the, the Asian carp, the white carp, the grass carp, the, just on and on and on. They took a hard look at the Asian carp when it first started appearing in Illinois rivers back in the 90s and realized it had great revenue potential. So in 2002, Mike Schaefer built a new processing plant in Thompson. He expects his family-owned company will double in size in the next two years, thanks to the Asian carp. Our uh, production last year was 12 million pounds. This year we hope to go at least over 20 million. And nothing goes to waste here. The parts of the fish that aren't used for food end up as liquid fertilizer. If Mike Schaefer's estimates are correct, 30 to 60 million pounds could be harvested from the rivers in the next few years. The irony is, at some point, the supply of Asian carp may not be able to meet demand, and we could be faced with a whole new dilemma. And the problem is, is when we build these markets, um, our customers expect to have continuity of supply. The worst thing we can do is build a market and then not be able to supply it. Coming up, we'll see some creative ways to rid the rivers of this pesky and dangerous fish. Asian carp is a troublesome fish species that has invaded the Mississippi River Basin in massive numbers. One of its main tributaries, the Illinois River, has been hit especially hard with a destructive and annoying silver carp that flies out of the water in massive numbers when spooked by a boat. We took my daughter and her friend out about six years ago to see these fish jump and the boat got bombarded with them. We thought they was gonna capsize a 16-foot John boat, even after all the ones were throwing out and back, right, and left. And so we decided we'd come up with a plan to get rid of them and get them out of our waters. That plan was to create an incentive for people to help Betty rid the pesky Asian carp from the river she loves. Which is why every August, the quiet little town of Bath, Illinois, comes alive with enthusiastic people who drive great distances to get here. They come in droves to answer Betty's challenge to hunt carp at what she calls the Redneck Fishing Tournament. This is the tournament of all tournaments. We're about ready to embark on the Asian carp. Maybe the slimiest fish that ever swam the rivers. Now everybody's afraid of them. We're not. Donned in crazy costumes and determined attitudes, armed with dip nets and baseball bats, these dedicated fish hunters mean business. And besides, the ones who catch the most in this two-day event can take home over $1,000 in prize money. If we catch 1,500 fish, that's 1,500 that can't spawn. 50 boats at a time speed their way down an eight-mile-long channel next to the Illinois River. And what begins as organized chaos often turns into team strategy, with a lead boat to spook the fish and a second boat to capture the prey. After two hours of battle, the worn out warriors return with their catch. We got into them pretty good and it started popping like Jiffy Pop and I got a couple in the face and in the head and I've been dazed the whole time. And the count begins. 122, 122. The most from a single boat. I knew it. Ooh, there's a large amount of fish out there. Betty's tournament did a good thing for this river. In two days' time, the Redneckers pulled out over 3,000 Asian carp. 
We want to clear the waters of these silly, stupid flying fish so we can get back out there and enjoy the sports with the grandkids and have fun while we still got a life to be able to get out there on that water and have fun. But redneck fishing isn't the only way to catch Asian carp. This flying invasive species is responsible for the creation of a new sport called extreme aerial bow fishing. It's the creation of outdoorsman Chris Brackett. Armed with specially equipped bows, they shoot the leaping fish, then reel them in. On a recent video shoot for Driven TV with Pat and Nicole, archer Jody Barnes on the right was poised and focused when it happened. The silver carp sprang from the river like a missile and hit Jody directly in the face. About an 18 or 20 pound flying Asian carp line drive me into my jaw, broke it. Asian carp are a dangerous and unwelcome species. So regardless of how we get them out of the rivers and whether we eat them, Delicious. make fertilizer out of them, or ship them overseas, one thing is for certain. We have to deal with reality uh, and the reality is those fish are here and we need to utilize them. Asian carp pose one of the greatest threats in the Great Lakes region. It's clear eradication is no longer viable. Efforts must focus on stopping the spread.